Early in 2018, I produced a video for YouTube looking at the problems of homelessness in the U.S. It looked at a broad range of people living in the streets, panhandlers, and the variety of shelters that attempt to help them. I tried to identify the causes of homelessness. Everything from unemployment to underemployment, mental illness, drug and alcohol abuse, medical expenses, and domestic abuse. In this video, I'll review some of those things, but also look at the growing numbers of people living out of their cars. Despite improvements in some areas of the U.S. economy, homelessness is again on the rise. Why is it growing so rapidly? Some experts say it's because of the destruction of the middle class in America. Real wages have not increased to keep pace with higher costs. The fact is, more Americans are falling out of the middle class each passing day. In L.A., the homeless people living on the streets has shot up 75% since 2012. Homelessness is exploding most often in big cities where there are the most expensive housing markets. This includes L.A., San Francisco, San Diego, Seattle, and Portland. Their streets are more and more filled by garbage, drug needles, and human feces. Mentally ill homeless, drug and alcohol addicted people, and panhandlers are everywhere. They have large areas where the public don't want to be in at night. As housing prices have risen drastically in these cities, many on the lower end of the income scale have been priced completely out of the housing market entirely. This has forced people to live on the streets, in shelters, and even in their vehicles. In Seattle, the big tech companies like Microsoft and Amazon should mean that everyone is prospering, yet homelessness is off the charts. Even in cold weather cities, more and more homeless are having to live out of their vehicles, even during sub-freezing temperatures. Without enough shelters, many of the homeless have nowhere else to go. Some cities have tried to pass laws to make it illegal to live in a vehicle, but that seldom works. Many individuals move along to the next city. If all this is going on during a booming economy, how bad will it be when the inevitable recession comes? Panhandling is quite common on big city street corners more and more. Most panhandlers are not a threat to motorists. Their signs often are the very familiar, homeless, hungry, please help, or veteran needs help, God bless. Many cities have passed laws to restrict panhandlers. Where I live in Indiana, asking somebody for money is a protected form of free speech, but they can't do the following or face a misdemeanor charge. No touching somebody without consent. They can't block somebody's path. No profanity. Panhandlers can't follow someone that refuses to give money, and they can't use intimidation to gain money. If panhandlers are on private property, the business owners can make them leave or face trespassing charges. Motorists and passerbys can make up their own minds to give money or not. If they don't want to and the panhandler tries to pressure them to give, they can report it to police so they can be charged. Most panhandlers report taking in about $12 to $20 per day. Many panhandlers say they do it as a means of survival to take care of their families. The number of homeless rose during President Trump's first year in office, with 554,000 Americans now living on the street. Many can't pay their rent, including people that have steady jobs, and face eviction, especially in high housing cost cities. The Coalition for the Homeless also reports that the primary cause for homelessness is lack of affordable housing. The other reasons, as mentioned earlier, are unemployment and underemployment, mental illness, drug and alcohol abuse, medical expenses, and domestic abuse. In the richest and most technological leading country in the world, it's a shame that there are so many homeless. Will things improve if the economy continues to make gains? I don't know that, but if another big recession comes, I do believe that the homeless number could be astronomical. Now seems like the right time to nationally address the issue and to make policy to better fix it, not just a band-aid. This is H.A. Graves, and we'll keep an eye on this.